afternoon. It is the Group 3 Vane Stakes for the three-year-old Colts and Geldings. And this is a great race. It is a lot of class horses lining up. 40, the bulk of that damage done prior to... Confirm, Alpha 1. $3, Giga Kick, $4. A little bit of support. Fun is Mullane at the 600 metres. So it is L for one. Looks to be contained speed at the moment by a length and a quarter. Semion is second. Thronbone is third. Then came Cannonball, Man in the Mirror. Giga Kick with five to make up. And Mullane will track it. Around the turn, 350 out. L for one held together by a length. Semion, Thronbone, Cannonball. Giga Kick to the outside, followed by Man in the Mirror. L for one called upon. 200 metres to go. Giga Kick wants to lay in but it's running home hard Alpha 1 100 to go Giga Kick a neck away Alpha 1 digs in Giga Kick wearing it down Giga Kick moves up nailed it Giga Kick smart win beat Alpha 1 Mullane and fourth in the race was Cannonball then came Thron this is first stake success comes with a horse that could take him to the top of the racing game Giga Kick is three for three and with him number one um, I'm just hoping they get run at a strong right to run 1200 <laughs> Wide. Next back nearer the inside is El Buena. Brazen Jam Guy wants you second last out three and four wide, about six off the leader. And last of all, Festival Prince at the 450. So Delight is the leader. Second, Pluto Crap. Third, the outside there is Deference and Dusty Tycoon. Northern Knight back nearer the inside. Fleet Doves won from the outside. And Guy Wanji is winding up. He's coming out after Delight. Delight in front, but Guy Wanji is making ground quickly. Delight and Guy Wanji. Guy Wanji on the outside and Delight. Go Wanji dashed up and took the lead from Delight Brazen Gem Festival Prince and Go Wanji. Go Wanji's won it brilliantly. Photo in second between lunging Brazen Gem at Delight and Close Up Festival Prince in the photo too, followed by Al. Well, what do you say? What do you say? Class comes to the top all of the time. That's why he had the first group one of the new season. This is the Wink Stakes over 1400. Wait for wearing those red earmuffs uh, for the mounting yard only. It is Animo, James McDonald, and went up once the jockey got on board. Um, yeah, I'd say it's eight and a half out of ten for him, and he'll get better. Last of all, so it's Halal trying to stack them up. Bar half length two for Bed and Lover. Two links in the third is hinged. Animo, a very handy four. Profondo's been three wide from the start. Then came Benno from Mawunga. Last year's winner, a bit cluttered up coming to the bend. And Berry starting to ride the stallion up. Ice bath the outside. And Fangirl is last, turning for home. And Halal swings in front narrowly from Forbidden Love. McDonald's got no alternative but to go back to the inside. And Animo and Profondo strides up with a big run on the outside. It's on now. Animo moved up on the inside to join Profondo and they're broken clear. It's Animo in front from Profondo. Fangirl late on the scene. But Animo's drawn clear, and there's another Group 1 success. Animo won the wing stakes by two lengths. Fangirl second, Profondo third. Benno finished off hard from Hint, and then came Halal. Well, that is a very special achievement. He now becomes a Group 1 winner at two, three, and four. The second horse to do it this century. He's in... Significant, isn't it? Ray pointed out in the Telegraph this morning that the last horse to win at two, three, and four group one was show a heart and prior to that was octagonal and that sort of puts things into perspective doesn't it yeah like yeah like you know without an international horse this horse might have won a cox play to caulfield guineas draws he gave him a sliver he's won a sliver you know far out like <laughs> naming a cold that's not far off going to stud that's done that so he's like out dancing brave you know it's like pretty special horse to have him work when do we see him again? $1.90, $1.95 settling up. Jamie Carr shooting for a race-to-race -race double here on Aft Cabin, the heavily backed favourite. OK, we're holding more money on... Up, he's Heaven, who's three wide in fourth place. Aft Cabin's between horses in fifth and Maximilius the inside. A length and a half away behind the man in the mirror. Then Jackano Superset, Tijuana, well back Zambagini, Atlantis Tycoon and Crosswinds. They come to the turn, 350 metres to go. And it's squad from... Dormier, Lincoln Square. Then he's heaven. Now, Half Cabin's trying to get a run. It's just about through now. And then came Jack and O. Squad, 200 metres to go. Half Cabin's out. He's heaven. And here's Jack and O down the middle. Half Cabin joined and headed by Jack and O. 100 to go. Jack and O moves up, takes the lead, storms away. Jack and O by two legs. Half Cabin. Photo third, Tijuana. He's heaven. Then Atlanta's Tycoon and squad from Superset. Next to finish in the race. And Jack and O gives us everything we were expecting of this horse eight to ten months ago as a two-year-old 
He was jaw-droppingly good on Boxing Day last year. On day. Talk about how we all thought he was going to be the three-year-old out of the Blue Diamond and then a few of us jumped off yesterday, but uh, let's have a look. It's, it's an addition of the Memsey, heaving with quality. Eight Group 1 winners, the 10th edition at the highest level. Ben Ascari, your top four. Here, punters are rallying around the top two in the market and there's been Snap Dancer that has had great support late too and looking like a market mover, would you believe, placed twice. Place a lovely bit of riding and they were followed by Tafani, sixth on the outside of Alligator Blood. Then came Elephant Dragon Leap, nonconformist. I'm Thunderstruck from Cascadian Elation. Well back as Zay Reck and Dewis is last. So with 500 metres to go, Snap Dancer is the leader in the million dollar Memsey. By three quarters of a length to call sign Mab. Western Empire peels three wide. Lightsaber the inside, then Tafane. Alligator Blood is tracking up behind those, then Dragon Leap. And I'm thunderstruck to the outside. Snap Dancer went for home though. 200 metres to go, two and a half lengths in front of Western Empire. Call sign Mab. I'm thunderstruck and Dragon Leap. But Snap Dancer, 100 metres to go, still clear. I'm thunderstruck, wearing it down. Snap Dancer needs the line, but won it. Snap Dancer. A neck, I'm thunderstruck. Cascadian for fourth a photo. Western Empire or Dragon Leap. Then came Alligator Blood. This was resembling a mosh pit. Brad Spicer and his group of owners in Snap Dancer have been on the ride of their lives right throughout the year. It started with her win in the filling of Triskay, a Sangster, and just claimed in the shadows by Star Tontes in a Tats Tiara. Again, you put it in inverted commas, residual fitness from Queensland counts. She's beaten all of them, and she puts her name alongside Atlantic Jewel as the only mayor to win the Memsey since it's been a Group 1. And Ethan Brown... Thanks, Matt. Thank you. The GPI Tramway Stakes, 1400, it's a Group 2. Now, the scrap, nothing to worry about. He's had a beautiful grounding. He's away for age star. As they come to the corner, and Azaki in front under a good grip from McDonald. Leads the way by a half length to Nimali, a length and a half then to Profondo. A couple further back then to Conversion Character as they come up the rise, and Nimali trying to worry the favourite Zaki out of it. Nimali pushed on. Now McDonald gets busy on Zaki on the inside, and they're two lengths clear from Profondo. Zaki starting to go through his gears now, the eight-year-old. He put pay to Nimali. Ice bath with a big run late, but it's Zaki clearing the tramway, and he goes back to back. Zaki by two and a half to Ice bath. Nimali third, Profondo every hope fourth. Further back. He's too good for them. He's the best horse in that race, Zaki, and he shows them what's ahead of the two, Mr. Brightside. It was a great win first up in the Lawrence with improvement to come. I think he's better suited at 1,600 metres. He can... ...only a few minutes ago today, but since the yard has taken place, he has trimmed up again back into $5. Let's have a look at what's happening with Mr Brightside. Last of all, 600 metres to go in the field, and it's Earlswood just in front of Mr Brightside. The favourites are one, two, three quarters of a length to Spanish Mission, and then came Inspirational Girl, who needs a run at this stage, and two further back to Sound. So Mr Brightside steps it up. Up, dials it up and at the 300 metres goes to the lead from Earlswood who battles on a length away then Spanish Mission and behind them Inspirational Girl they bump round the turn but Mr Brightside at the 150 ping for home two and a half lengths in front of Spanish Mission Inspirational Girl but Mr Brightside put pay to them and it's race clear and Mr Brightside won at four lengths Inspirational Girl Spanish Mission sound for fourth and Earlswood was last of the five the dream is alive for the Mr Ben and J.D. Hayes have made the comparisons recently that this horse has got a little bit of better loosen up about him. That is high. 2,000, not well, 2,400. 2,400 is the question. I think you'll yeah. see out 2,000 metres quite easily because of his temperament and the way he relaxes um, and the way he races. But, look, I, if I was making the decisions around him, I'd definitely be going to a Cox Plate before I looked at a Caulfield Cup. Dan Cobby from Lab... To leave Zaki in yesterday, I thought when the track was downgraded to a 10... They may have just taken the horse out and given him a, an experience on firmer ground maybe next Saturday at Flemington. So credit to Annabelle Newsham and Connections for... Very quickly, you're looking at half that within about two minutes. $3.50 and equal favourite as we change it up. 
just this second. Golden Mile at $3.50, equal favourite, but I will tell you... 600 metres to run, Rise of the Masses, two lengths clear. From Zoo Tiger, two after Basquiat, two after Machilade. Golden Mile moving up the outside, further back to Brosnan, and Magic's off the track, Conqueror buried back on the inside as they straighten up. Rise of the Masses, two lengths clear. From Zoo Tiger, who pounces on the outside, Basquiat as well, and now Golden Mile winding up on the outside. Basquiat moved up to Zoo Tiger. Golden Mile moved up to the pair. Golden Mile laying it on Basquiat. Got the upper hand though, Golden Mile, and has drawn clear here in the Ming Dynasty. Very strong late, and Golden Mile won it comfortably. Machilato got up for second in front of the tiring Basquiat, then flag of honour from Conqueror. Mile, Sam Clipperton and James Cummings. What a nice three-year-old moving forward now. He goes to 40. Yeah, look, he, he's a brute, a really good-looking mm. horse in comparison to his stable mate. He's a, he's a very interesting horse. You've got to like from here on in um, what he does here. And and he look, he, he did react when he was he drew a barrier and he did race closer yesterday. And um, fierce impact defeating Russian Camelot two years ago. Four of the last eight winners have come out of the Memsey. That is the path. I'm Thunderstruck comes through. He was superb. Second to who adds their name in the million dollar Maccabi Diva of 2022. Well, the flashing light run of in the Memsey was clearly I'm Thunderstruck and... Uh... $2.70 now your favourite taking on I'm Thunderstruck. Cascadian starting to trim up. The best you could bet today after scratchings was $6. Have a look at this. He's into $4. Why? Well, he gets that cover. 900 metres to go. Alligator blood. It's even. Led by a half length non-conformist. A length and a quarter Western Empire Moonga. A length and a quarter I'm Thunderstruck and then came Regal Power. Cascadian in the outside of She's Ideal at the end. Alligator Blood with a cheap split here. Comes up towards the corner. Led non-conformist at the 600 metres. A length and a quarter. Mawunga about to peel three wide. Western Empire needing some luck. Regal Power behind those horses. They were followed by I'm Thunderstruck Cascadian and She's Ideal. 450 metres to go. Alligator Blood is the first to straighten. Clicks up and kicks away. Two and a half lengths in front of Western Empire. I'm Thunderstruck darting through over on the far side. Then came Mawunga and Cascadian down the outer. Alligator Blood, 150 metres to go. Two lengths in front. I'm Thunderstruck needing to get there. Alligator Blood tiring. I'm Thunderstruck over the top, rumbling hard and got up. I'm Thunderstruck. I reckon it's just beaten Alligator Blood in a beauty. Third in the race. 50 metres to go. Alligator Blood is the first to straighten. Clicks up and kicks away. Two and a half lengths in front of Western Empire, I'm Thunderstruck darting through over on the far side. Then came Mawunga and Cascadian down the outer. Alligator Blood, 150 metres to go. Two lengths in front. I'm Thunderstruck needing to get there. Alligator Blood tiring. I'm Thunderstruck over the top, rumbling hard and got up. I'm Thunderstruck, I reckon it's just beaten Alligator Blood in a beauty. Third in the race, Mawunga. Followed by Cascadian and behind them nonconformist. Then William Alligator Blood heads up, heads down. The baldy face of I'm Thunderstruck on the outside. Alligator Blood on the inside. Those on course think it might be the favourite. The photo's there and it's the Thunder. I'm Thunderstruck will win the Maccabi Diva Stakes. And there's a fair dash of lightning about and reels in alligator blood in the shadows of the post. Well, he's pretty brave, wasn't he? I mean, he was in in a awkward spot again behind heels, and uh, alligator blood was off and gone. You know, and I thought, well, probably the best horse in the race, alligator blood. Uh, we're not going to run him down, but uh, probably the beauty. Soon enough, but uh, nonconformist going forward was uh, the surprise. But once they'd settled down, he was going to need a lot of luck in running. Um, but yeah, uh, it, the closing sectionals were fantastic for Mon Thunderstruck, who produced an awesome finish to run down Alligator Blood. It was beautifully rated from Tim Clark, but that's enough. It's the second time we've seen Alligator Blood, Mike, lead in a Group 1 mile contest, look home and be run down. It happened near the Caulfield Guineas and again there yesterday. I mean, he was perfectly rated in front, I thought, and that, that mid-race slowdown played into his hands. And, you know, Mark was probably a little bit lucky at the top of the straight, and I'll be interested to get Mark's thoughts on this. going to power home, but um, he's just not... I mean, to make up that ground in the final 100 metres was, was it's so exciting and a, an unbelievable performance. He highlighted that in the memory. Call from Matty Hill, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, got a bit of goosebumps watching that again, but... Um... Yeah, if, uh, I, I don't think many horses would be able to run Alligator Blood down. The way he kicked at the top of the straight, when I finally got a bit of room there, um, I was like, 
I think it's uh, too far gone here, but he's got a good will to win my horse when I sort of got within, you know... The to Ronnie, oh, I'd be expecting that they will be. Um, I've never really seen that far forward. I know there's probably a little bit of residual. All around, he's arch rival. This is the 11th time they have met in a race. Here's Eduardo. With Nature Strip, $2.30 favourite for the shorts. Uh, we might have enough... Six. Classic legend and Anathol's last of all. Eduardo's got the lead all on his own here at the 600 metres in the hands of Brenton Abdullah. Leads by a length away of a pass. Nature Strip railing through, gets to third. Mazu without cover. Lost and running deeper out. Then came Athelric, hand of the troop, rocketing by Andermatt. Shelby 66 taking rails, runs. Classic legend, second last. Eduardo comes up the rise, two lengths clear from Nature Strip, stalking him. Then came over pass. Lost and running to the outside. Side, making ground, Eduardo in front, but Nature Strip getting on terms now. Here comes the chat, Nature Strip taking the lead from Eduardo, clear from Lost and Running, and Nature Strip back on target to defend his Everest title. Nature Strip beat Lost and Running over pass, they beat off Eduardo, then Mask Crusader from Marzu. Big group one, he was stunning today. He's improved, Lizzie, he, he's, he's improved, he's an eight year old. Royal Ascot, he was dominant against many of the world's best sprinters, one from the United States. We didn't expect it would be this good. I expected there'd be a bit of down, down, down time required and coat. Good horses, yeah. he's still some coping with it better than others. It's, but he was, don't put yourself in a false sense of security here. He is not unbeatable in this. No. <laughs> in this oh. Everything went perfect for him yesterday. Yep. And a couple of those horses resuming were unbelievable. Yep. Well, let's get to that. He come, he's coming right into play, $17 chance. OK, just to, look, on this mark, this is what happened yesterday. Nature Strip 280 into 210. The, the tempo was steady. He got into good rhythm, and he was he was electric. He really was. It was a brilliant win. Back to 12. Times you wish you weren't right, and you wish the radar had pushed it elsewhere. The rain that had hit Ballarat an hour ago is descending upon Caulfield. It is here he is really firm in betting, as we would expect with the dominance that uh, we've seen from this horse in the past. And at $2.20... At the end of the field, in extraordinary conditions, they race to the railway side with 800 metres to go. The leader is Zambagini from Aft Cabin, who's about a length away. He was a pink rider, amenable as second last. And Black Samurai is at the end of the field, wouldn't like the dry cleaning bill. Coming around the turn, 350. 50 metres to go, and it's Zambagini. Three quarters now, a half and aft cabin. Strides up on the outside now, comes around the corner at the 250 and exploded away. Aft cabin, three length Zambagini. A gap Meridius down the outside and behind those horses, Berardino and Sir Bailey. But it's all aft cabin at 1400 metres is going to stride in this cult. And as they reach the line, it's aft cabin winning it well. Four lengths Meridius, amenable Sir Bailey, Berardino, Zambagini. Well, they aquaplane through the Ned Caulfield Guineas prelude. Aft cabin shows his class. Took Zambi yesterday. He's the horse to beat in the Guineas. Uh, he's a proper horse. Um, and this stallion is stern. Uh, mm. I can picture him winning the Golden Rose, eased up J-Mac, and I've been waiting for him to fire some bullets. And he's got uh, aft cabin, golden mile, and brigantine on a golden eagle path. So he's going fantastic. Touch your top four for the delayed. But now we're here with it, the 1,000 guineas prelude. Yeah, this is my best of the day. She's looking. By the rain come. Who can run really well here. Benny Mellum uh, draws a low gate. And Dean Lester. Like they were followed by Call Sign Charlie Mumbai Jewel Vagrant. Well back in the field then is Hope at hand, who's niggled at very early. Not handling the conditions from Boogie Dancer, Love Nest and Sumatra. Celestial Spirit took it up cleanly. Coming up towards the corner at the 450, a length Miss Hellfire. She's lickety split. Despite being wide, runs towards the middle of the track and is coming on. They were followed then by Presenia March Bonner, Mumbai Jewel and Boogie Dancer brought to the middle and is coming home hard. Boogie Dancer takes the lead, 200 to go. Kick clear, two links in front of a wall. Bonner, Mumbai Jewel, she's lickety split and Sumatra late, but it's all Boogie Dancer careering away and Boogie Dancer won it easily. Three links Sumatra, she's lickety split, then Bonner and behind them then was Mumbai. 1,000 guineas on the Underwood Stakes program and Boogie Dancer Brent Sarava hit the nail on the head pre-race. 14 back to 12 was pretty much the... Right, kiss on all four cheeks in the last race. Here comes up your favourite, decimated with scratchings uh, earlier this morning, this race, the Mayor's race, but she was terrific winning the Let's Elope last start. Her second up... $7 into $6, Daisies. Mooney Valley form there. Gate one, she'll be stalking them and will need to get into the... Set to go for the Group 2 stock stakes.
Set and away they go. And Foxy Frieda from barrier number three was moderately away. Kiss on all four cheeks. Jumps well with Lady of Honor, Sky Horse, and then came Elusive Express and two lengths to Daisies. They swing towards the side of the track now. Lady of Honor was able to Civic Express, Sky Horse, and Daisies as they approach the corner. Lady of Honor about to dial it up at the 400 metres, let a half Sione. Kiss on all four cheeks now crucially needs a run from Foxy Frieda. And then Elusive Express, Daisy, Sky Horse, Lady of Honor, ping for home at the 200 metres. Kiss on all four cheeks. Needs a run up on the inside. Sione and Elusive Express is trying to loop them. Lady of Honor, 100 metres to go from Sione. Daisy's bursting through and Elusive Express the outside. Lady of Honor just in front. Daisy's coming at her and Elusive Express a great finish. Daisy's or Elusive Express touch out Lady of Honor. Behind them, photos for four. As we're getting towards the slow-mo, head up, head down. Oh, I'm staying out of that hutch. Daisy's, I'll, I'll, I'll go up. with Daisy's. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, thanks uh, for the... I'll uh, go with Daisy's. And uh, Daisy's got it. Being a horse who has got plenty of talent, Jane mentioned it's hard to keep the weight... ..on form, how it works out. This is as good a ride as you're going to see anywhere. Damien Lane missed the start. He had to go back, ride for luck. He sliced through the field. That's the difference between winning and losing here. Jamie Carr being... Big one of the day. This is uh, race number eight, the Shondon Golden Rose, over 1,400 metres, Group 1. And this mounting out is brought to you by... Aguino at $7. It was an amazing return, uh, but a few punters just questioning that Melbourne form, I guess. Golden Mile at 7 bucks is equal second favourite now. She's... Dormier away well straight to second. She's extremes up there. Just in advance of the favourite in secret and Golden Mile's pushing forward out wide and going right around the field as Zoo Tigers steady the tempo in front and Golden Mile quickly got to second. Dormier back position and political debates last. 600 metres to run. Zoo Tiger in front from Golden Mile. Paris Dior three out third. In secret creeping up on the inside as she's extreme. Then came Dormier as they straighten up. Zoo Tiger being eyeballed by Golden Mile. Golden Mile moved up. Really serving it up to Zoo Tiger. Two lengths away to Paris Dior. In secret going back to the inside. She's got a job to pick up. It's Golden Mile just in front of Zoo Tiger, a length away to In Secret, Golden Mile, Zoo Tiger, In Secret, Jackano storming home, In Secret up the fence, Jackano wide out, Jackano! Jackano got up with a heart-stopping victory in the Golden Rose to knock off In Secret. Golden Mile moved up, really serving it up to Zoo Tiger, two lengths away to Paris Dior, In Secret going back to the inside, she's got a job to pick up, it's Golden Mile just in front of Zoo Tiger, a length away to In Secret, Golden Mile, Zoo Tiger, In Secret, Jackano storming home, In Secret up the fence, Jackano wide out, Jackano! Jackano got up with a heart-stopping victory in the Golden Rose to knock off In Secret, followed by Zoo Tiger, Golden Mile in it for third, further back to Firebird. Well, you didn't know where to look in those final stages, and Jackano was finding the line from back in the field. In Secret was... Oh. Jackano looms up within Secret and wins the Golden Rose. So, Michael Kent... What an amazing win, coming from back off there when nothing at all has made ground all day in seat as a whole uh, that's something that you thought couldn't be done today Corey well, I stated in the making ground um, I was a bit concerned before the race because nothing had really flashed home out in the middle of the track but we didn't unleash him but gee what a, what a horse yeah. and you don't see yeah. and you don't see horses come that wide and win yeah. at Rosehill very often that's for sure well very often that's yeah. for sure well should he be thinking about the Everest well I say yes I say yes this horse you know, this at this stage, obviously, he rode him beautifully to win, but he took a while to wind him up, and wind up he did. You know, they've run half a second faster than Nimalee on the day, so it's a proper race. Um, but to think he could get up with 150 metres to go there... It's pretty incredible. And not, not only his run, but in secret. Like, Amazing. It, it was really... She was gone. She was, she was gone. She was going to get beaten, like, I reckon, a length. And then at the 100 metre mark, she found, like, two lengths. Godolphin thought they... After <laughs> waxing lyrical about it his whole two-year-old season, but fastest last 200 of the meeting, he's come home in 11.08. Um, it was even better between the 400 and the 200, Dwayne. That was some sort of a win. Yeah, I think this was a r standing... F really well. This is going to be a good race, I think, in secret. She might just be a little brilliant um, for the way that race worked out, so... 
Coolmore's got to be very much in the mix for her. I, I think that's a good... The day today, the Group 1 Underwood Stakes over the 1,800 metres it, it is a six-horse field. And it was only just over an hour ago that we... Over an hour ago that we have a new favourite installed at the top of betting and the way that he carries himself. Well, I'm Thunderstruck is into $2.20 now. He has been absolutely smashed in the last 20 minutes or so in the betting. He... A bit closer. Two lengths to I'm Thunderstruck who has its back and non-conformist last. Alligator Blood joined by Zaki as they reach the 600 metres and they're about to dial it up in the Underwood. Then came out deeper on the track. Moonga scrubbed along from Mr Brightside as Alligator Blood and Zaki now step it right up down the hill. 450 metres to go. It's Alligator Blood from Zaki looking to lug in. They're two lengths Mr Brightside. Then I'm Thunderstruck down the outside with three to pick up. Alligator Blood, 200 metres to go. Zaki not done with but alligator blood three quarters zaki i'm thunderstruck running on 100 to go alligator blood from zaki i'm thunderstruck alligator blood the game is going to do it today alligator blood's won it three quarters of a length Photo second by Woomba, I'm thunderstruck and zaki between them then mr brightside and non-conformist was last adrian bott pause over his 17th group one win in concert with gay waterhouse what a triumph from Alligator Blood. He's taken a bite out of a vintage wait for age field. Everything we love about the sport at its highest level in Australia. There was aggression, there was intent, there was a genuine contest. And Alligator Blood was gone chips in here in the last. And it is all about I wish I win now into a dollar sixty-five. And wouldn't be surprised to see that trim up to a dollar sixty. Only fifteen minutes ago he was a dollar eighty-five. And of course he was hovering around that dollar ninety-five all throughout betting. So this is a ready and away they go. Pretty good. Around the turn, five hundred to go. It's open-minded Imperial lad from Gravina hooked to the middle of the course in the blue. Two lengths regards Marie Belplacier. Where are these favourites? Ayrton coming up there outside three off the lead and coming on I wish I win still third last Gravina at the 300 meters in front of regards Marie Imperial lad then Ayrton catalyst back over on the far side is finishing well and Bell Plessy is coming through from I wish I win Ayrton at the 100 I wish I win's got out and flashing now I wish I win over the top will look to be struggling but makes it easy at the end I wish I win from Ayrton Bandersnash and then came thanks regards Marie Bell Plessy. where are these favorites Ayrton coming up the outside three off the the lead and coming on. I wish I win still third last. Gravina at the 300 metres in front of regards Marie Imperial lad. Then Ayrton Catalyst back over on the far side is finishing well and Bell Plessy is coming through from I wish I win. Ayrton at the 100. I wish I win's got out and flashing now. I wish I win over the top. Will look to be struggling but makes it easy at the end. I wish I win from Ayrton Bandersnash and then came Gravina. Next in the field across the track. Have parted with your worst enemy's money on I Wish I Win, the $1.70 VOP favourite at the 200 metre mark. Luke Nolan was surrounded, but in the end, it's plain sailing, and the Moody-Nolan combination have got themselves a double on Underwood Stakes Day. Waltz on by, Bass came to the fore in the end. I Wish I Win, that's some sort of victory in the Testa Rossa. Seen some nice performances today, but that was right up there with them. That was a serious, serious victory. I think we all thought it point expected that Montefilia would just get out of touch. Cascadian at $2.70 on the second line has been a firmer today and Numerian at $5.50. Right just in front from Numerian and Montefilia pulls out three wide now, a half length off them. Cascadian gets onto her back as they turn. Kiss the brides out enough. Numerian takes the lead with Montefilia looming up on the outside and Montefilia revved up by Collar trying to get on turns with Numerian and Cascadian's going towards the inside. Montefilia's flat. She's gone and Cascadian sprinted hard, went up to join New Marion. Montefilly staggering, but she'll run third. Cascadian's drawn clear now from New Marion, and it's a big win to Cascadian in the Hill Stakes by three lengths to New Marion. Montefilly plotted into third. Yonkers for Montefilly, we know. It was a brilliant ride by James McDonald. He's happy to sit back. Takes prize money to over five million dollars. He's been a work in progress, hasn't he? Beautiful, thank you. Thanks a lot.
Going with the grey here, top ranked. I liked him first up in the Bill Ritchie. He got the job done well. I think the pay... Really ...how things are going to jump. I would imagine Ice Bath favourite from Hinged. Top ranked now on the third line at $4.80. In terms of money held, Ice... By a length on Nimali. Two lengths away to Hinged in a stalking position. Clear from Ellsberg. Then Bora Eternal from top ranked. Fangirl Ice Bath. She's right on the coattails of the grey for the back to Papali. And Kiku's last of all. Racing towards the corner. 500 metres to run. Cross talk in front from Nimali, who's sticking to the task. Two lengths away to Hinge. Top rank slightly bought there, getting to the outside. Ice Bath is two lengths away as Nimali takes the lead now at the top of the rise. But top rank is closing in, so is Hinge. Goes, the more likely it is it's going to be a dead heat. A dead heat. Well, this is the longest photo we've seen at Ramwick in a long, long time. It's got to be a dead heat. It's a dead heat. It's a dead heat. And the crowd roars. The Ellsberg fans and the top rank fans. And look at this. Look at this scene now. Just you know, when you have a horse like that, he's so honest. I think three times he's been out of the first four. I wish they had more. And, yeah, well done, mate. No betting in the wide, wide world when this big grey just ambled and loped up to him. Oh, look at him go. He's a beautiful horse. He's going to just race away with this. But he showed good fight. I, look, I think Gerald may have thought, and Sterling may have thought, um, yeah, well, well, they're going to go to the 1800. So it was a last-minute decision to run him here. And, boy, was it a good decision. He's got, got two stallions there yeah. fighting out the finish. I tell you what, that top rank, it, it, I know you second up yep next time around he's yep. going to be better again oh, better again for sure he, he could place to be on tab turnbull stakes day we're up to race five the hq tavern dane hill stakes 1100 meters group two set weights plus penalties for the three-year-olds this race of course he's got a great color to his skin he's holding condition really nicely this prep on the two-year-olds here for the dane hill giga kick we know he's undefeated he's a dollar 85 here for the dane hill and clearly the best backed on turnover with sports 150 meters to run it's dual the leader from sun Tzu, swiss exile and giga kick is coming on up the middle they were followed next by buena noches who hooks out wider cannonball is coiled up and further back in the field great barrier reef 250 to go it's dual with giga kick joining in and buena noches the outside giga kick takes the lead shown the whip led three quarters of a length buena noches dual cannonball so it's giga kick finding 50 meters to go buena noches is going to lunge giga kick off buena noches it's very very close but i think giga kicks held it then cannonball duel in photos back behind those brereton great it'll be a photo finish but it'll be giga kick by a nostril Giga kick will win. Craig Williams for Clayton Douglas. He looked pretty confident. He was looking around. He just didn't know when to push the button because he knew Buena Noches was behind him. Thrills all around for Clayton Douglas and the team. The photo, there's a pimple, there's a nostril. It's millimetres. But it's Dane Hill stakes. He's now four from four. Buenos Noches has gone. Group three vein, now group two Dane Hill. This horse put the riding on the wall. The horse looked a little bit... Um above himself in the yard. I think he's going to take improvement out of that. And I spoke to Craig Williams today. So the six rock and horse. Uh, private eye, this is a good go here. And uh, it was as good as $8.50 this morning, just after scratching. So did touch the $4.80 now, settling at that $5 mark. Swats that. Well, very solid. She is your... And further back as Swats that Shaquiro baller. Private eye, Zutori, well back in the field with Tycoonist and Wild Planet. Onto the course proper with 500 metres to go. It's the astrologist and Kemal Parser, a length and a half. 
half, Rock and Horse, Athelric and Serious Suspect. Then Shaquero swats that badly needs a run. Then Baller and Private Eye down the outside from Tycoonus, the astrologist, 250 metres to go, joined by Rock and Horse. And now Private Eye, the heavily backed Private Eye, takes the lead from Rock and Horse, the astrologist, and then Baller. But it's Private Eye surging away, back for a stack and bolts in. Private Eye from Rock and Horse, Baller, then the astrologist. Half Rock and Horse, Athelric and Serious Suspect. Then Shaquero swats that badly needs a run. Then Baller and Private Eye down the outside from Tycoonus. The astrologist, 250 metres to go. Joined by Rock and Horse and now Private Eye. The heavily backed Private Eye takes the lead from Rock and Horse. The astrologist and then Baller. But it's Private Eye surging away. Back for a stack and bolts in. Private Eye from Rock and Horse. Baller then the astrologist. Further back, Zutori Tycoonus. This day last year, it was an Epsom for Private Eye. And he starts perhaps a trajectory towards a champion's mile here in five weeks' time with a slashing victory. Julie delivered that, and the 60 kilos was little impost for our race favourite, who was heavily, heavily supported in betting and has been the theme of... It was one of the um, more impressive performances of the day, but then we get the data, then we get the data through this morning, and it was the most impressive performance of the day, according to the data. So he got in back and into a, a bit of an awkward position. He's let down with a, a huge turn of foot to win this race and win running away decisively. Private Eye. Could James Harron pick Private Eye? Why, why, why not? Why not? He's an Epsom winner. He should have won the Stradbroke. Yeah, he should have beat Alligator Blood in the Stradbroke, mind you. Yep. And look at his 1,200 metre record. I think he's had five runs at 1,200 for four wins. And he likes he likes the soft going, doesn't he? Well, he's, he's probably better on the dry. That's why he was there. But that's a, that, that's an awesome return. Yeah. Uh, and he's had 60 kilos. Uh, and he's a back marker. Mm -hmm. oh, he loves Ramwick. I, I can really make a real push Thanks for him. Fine, yeah. Yep. Well, performance of any of these runners in the last 12 months or so. Galaxy of stars on the honour roll of the Caulfield Stakes now known as the might and power. Ben Ascari, your numbers for our first group in the running. It's going to be a terrific clash between these heavyweights of the turf. As we're betting around that $2.40 mark crunched. He did touch uh, $2.15, but steadying up at $2.20. Animo is the big go for the might and power. The wait for age champs are on the track on their way to the gates. Benno, Mr. Brightside. Mawunga is last. Alligator Blood by a neck to Zaki the outside as they reach the 800 marker. A length and a half. I'm Thunderstruck. And they were followed by Animo, who is going to show their hand first. And then came nonconformist Benno. Two lengths, Mr. Brightside side and Mawunga who's niggled at Zaki now breathes down the neck of Alligator Blood at the 500 metres there toe to toe two lengths to Animo I'm Thunderstruck and then Nonconformist hooking to the outside from Benno Zaki really going for it round the turn now 300 metres to go Alligator Blood sticks with him and they're toe to toe two lengths I'm Thunderstruck Animo to the middle of the course then Benno Zaki Alligator Blood what a race at the 150 I'm Thunderstruck wearing them down down and Animo is starting to come now at the 100. Here comes Animo over the top with I'm Thunderstruck who's lifting Animo. Six group ones, a big one. Beat I'm Thunderstruck, Zaki. For f really going for it round the turn now. 300 metres to go. Alligator Blood sticks with him and they're toe to toe. Two legs. I'm Thunderstruck. Animo to the middle of the course then Benno. Zaki, Alligator Blood. What a race at the 150. I'm Thunderstruck wearing them down and Animo is starting to come now at the 100. Here comes Animo over the top with I'm Thunderstruck who's lifting Animo. Six group ones, a big one. Beat I'm Thunderstruck, Zaki. For fourth, photo, Mr. Brightside, Benno, followed by Alligator Blood, Mawuga. Our best middle distance wait for age performer was. Animo's got the interim belt heading to the Cox Plate, but it's up for grabs. We've got so much to look forward to, and once again... Leave this run too late, but... That was a proper horse race with Alligator Blood, who's capable of skipping away at way from... Uh, I'm, he must have just... They, they all went down fighting. I think it's um, going to set up for a brilliant Cox Plate. Any, any one of them can win it, that's for sure. And um... The pinnacle of those six so far, and that's not taking anything away from those previous victories, particularly the Swedes. That's the other talking point. He emulates Lonro in 2002 and Huber got you in 2008. 
to win the Caulfield Guineas one year, return 12 months later on the same day and take out this race. Yeah, and it was, oh, there was he's gone here. Um, and, and to lift over the concluding stages was something pretty special. Mr Brightside rips home. Love preparation. Look at Thunderstruck through the line. Look at Benno through the line there, the grey. Um, a him and non -con Guinea's favourite. Now he's our Caulfield Guinea's favourite. Now he got out to his uh, $3.30. Just after scratchings this morning was the best price punters were able to snap up. Bang on race day. He has been the best backed here. Into $2.80. Going to settle around two ninety as I talk to you. Uh... Sky for you, Sozzi, Pinko, Meridius. Fujita San is last. So the front runner is dashing. 600 metres to go. Looks to dial it up by a half length. The lethal thoughts a length and a half the fortune teller. Elkington Road, the inner. Then came Tijuana, who hooks out four deep from Mullane. Next in the field is Golden Mile. Elliptical runs up behind that wall. And then Sir Bailey. Lethal thoughts dashing as they reach the 250. Joined by the fortune teller. Then Tijuana, Golden Mile is coming on now down the middle of the track and Bankmore from a long way back. Golden Mile up to Tijuana, then Elliptical. Golden Mile, 100 metres to go from Tijuana. Elliptical late. Golden Mile, Elliptical's driving. Golden Mile, saw out the mile. Won the guineas, beat Elliptical. Photo third between out wide Aussie Pinko and... James McDonald on the outside trying to get everything he could out of Golden Mile. And does Godolphin's Golden Day continue... You better believe it. Phil Guineas, Animo, last year, so good. And it looks to be good. Obviously, he was out on his feet late, but he made a good surging run. And um, I think I think the best horse won the race, for, to be fair. He, was, he had the riding on the wall. And obviously, there's some fast finishes. But um, this is rated six lengths or so. Thanks to Daily Section, it was worse than last year. Um, well for the Neds Coogee Cup here for race three. The favourite still sitting on top, Gunstop number three. Hop yes, and back at the 700 metres. Johnny Get Angry joined and now headed by the favourite Gunstock who's gone to the front by default pretty early. Milford's about three quarters of a length off it at the 500 metres and they're clear. Two lengths, Yonkers Glint of Hope, then Dudu's Dart Paternal. Back in the field then Media Award under pressure from Aurora Symphony. So it's Gunstock on the point of the corner. 350 metres to go. Over two lengths Milford. Glint of Hope Yonkers and then Media Award Paternal Aurora Symphony. Gunstock shown the whip. 200 metres to go. Three lengths Glint of Hope Yonkers running on then Aurora Symphony. But it's Gunstock. 100 metres to go. Well clear. Still about two and a half. Three lengths in front of Yonkers and Gunstock switched off near the line is going to win the Coongee easily. Gunstock from Yonkers Aurora Symphony or Glint of Hope then to do... With Mick Price after the victory of Gunstock in the Coongee about where to next because that was an easy yeah, who can win a nice staying race you know I know this is probably one today uh, and he looks the winner he is an old favorite he's an old favorite from every Ford if you're keen to have a crack but it's funny with these horses that have had a of all is Lorne Bien. Right, oh, well, Zarex in a real mood here and has busted the field wide open. At the 600 metres, Zarex is eight lengths in front now of Sir Dancer, followed by Pinarello. You'd think uh, Kira McAboy wants to get off early to the Bruno Mars concert. It's well clear, Zarex turning for home from Sir Dancer. Promito pulling out from Pinarello. The favourite Cascadian still fourth last and staying towards the inside. Zarex uh, folding up like a deck chair there and Sir Dancer from Mido and Just Folk are moving up and now Cascadian is starting to rope them in on the inside. Just Folk the outsider from Mido but here he comes Cascadian with a big white face racing to the lead from Just Folk. Mido holding third but Cascadian a big winner coming from a mile back to win the Craven Plate. Just Folk second, Mido third. He's a... Sh Mitchell, he's up to about five and a half, five point six, five point seven million. He was the perfect. Number three, the you this morning. What has changed? Uh, well, he's out to one seventy five. Greg uh, Nature Strip. Uh, two runners in single figures now. Eduardo and Mars Crusader. Three touch twenty one. Giga Kick. He continues to be popular. He got into a short of seventeen dollars. He's back out to twenty one. Running up at the gates now. It's um, it's it's a massive day. Here is. Excited for this big one. Yeah. Well. 
get this. <laughs> it's next. The big boy. Quarters to Joyful Fortune. Nature Strip staying deep on the outside of Overpass. And Shades of Rose settles in fifth. Private Eyes pretty handy on the inside of Marzu. Then came Kevin Tari from the three-year-old Giga Kick firing up. The other three-year-old Jack and O went past him. Then ingratiating. And Mars Crusader sees them all. So it's Eduardo and his old sparring partner, Nature Strip. They're running a long way from home. Joyful Fortune holding a spot on the rails with overpass between them. Then Shades of Rose from Private Eye is only five off the lead as they turn. They swing now. Eduardo and Nature Strip head and head up the rise and a thriller here on the Everest. And Nature Strip given the cue by McDonald and the champ races to the lead by a length of Eduardo. Private Eye's running on. Then came overpass. Shades of Rose, Jack and Al and Giga Kick. Nature Strip a length in front. Private Eye. Thriller here on the Everest and Nature Strip given the cue by McDonald and the champ races to the lead by a length of Eduardo. Private Eyes running on, then came over past Shades of Rose, Jack and Al and Giga Kick. Nature Strip a length in front, Private Eye, Giga Kick, Giga Kick down the outside wins the Everest. The unbeaten three-year-old's done it, Giga Kick beat Private Eye. Then Nature Strip, Jack and Owen Marzu for the back to work. Hold off. Private Eye and Giga Kick, and Giga Kick for Clayton Douglas and Craig Williams. Craig Williams has never been here on a court field. Cuts a professional. Um, now you can see that with the 53 kilos, ridden like that, he's, he's electric. So, um, yeah, a bit of a whirlwind. Um, but he wasn't in a lot of faith in him. So, um, he's a star. And uh, watch out, the, the new kid's on the block. <laughs> you are, and he are, and he Moment, but he's taken this whole, and he's only a two year old. He's still a baby. Yeah, look, his birthday's on Wednesday. So I think I'll buy him a birthday cake. I think. <laughs> so, um, no, nah, look, it was it was unreal, and um, he's he's really he's really um, really come through the run well, and we're very happy. And to think that uh, we'll be able to beat Nature Strip, it's it's unbelievable. Mm. And I know you galloped him on you, and you you, you him on you, and you, you you James, you you look at unbeaten horses. Now he's five from five, and he may one day be beaten. It, it, it went through it this morning. I think the throughout the period of the the Everest, um, the average SP price has been just over nine dollars. Yes. So it's not just a favourite no. race, and I think this opens up more doors. There'd be a lot of people sitting. I'm sitting next to Glenn Munsey, where he's got all the big computer there with the figures and the tab and the big holds, the millions and millions and millions. The worst possible result was the winner. So he was very popular. Race Giga Kick is the best example of you. You go with your your head. Yep. You pick you pick the you pick the horse you think can can run well, and you just hope they can deliver. I think he's changed the race in six years. I thought yes, yes, yes. Did as a three-year-old. I think this horse has done more for the Everest than any other horse. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. They're the two biggest turning points for the race. <laughs> You're on two. The time of their life out there. It was a big party alongside a race meet. <laughs> Now to the Silver Eagle, you have Lock Eagle who came out and blew everyone away there at Canterbury. Churchill getting a good one on the inside of Global Osbred. Valana fifth now. Then came Brigatine from Branch Hand. Morris is me dad. Further back to Lock Eagle. Kiss some star. Tonto's the rails. Waterford third last. 350 metres to run. Mr. Mozart trying to beat off Lavish Girl. Coteal along the fence. Wider out. Valana starting to lengthen well on the outside of Global Osbred. And two further back to Brigatine. Valana wide out, moved up. And Valana takes the lead, drifting right in across the track, but Valana's well clear in the Silver Eagle and drawing away for an emphatic victory. Mr. Mozart holds down second, photo third, the roughy global Osbred and Brigatine. And who's one of the early stars for James Cummings as a trainer. That third photo is important. The first three get in automatically to the Golden Eagle and both of those horses... This is the uh, Silver Eagle. First, second and third go through to the Golden Eagle and didn't Godolphin pick the right horse for, for the Gold Cracked 460 today into $3.80.
had his nose in front as favouritism. 3.90 each of two, Dragonstone. Ready to run, Chris passes at the end, so it's Asfura, the leader, coming up to the corner. 450 metres to go by three quarters of a length, the free of debt. Then came Oxley Road on the inside for the back generation, hooked to the outside. Next in the field, Ashford Street, Dragonstone over on the far side from Kalos, but Asfura kicked into gear. 200 metres to go, and she's two and a half lengths in front of a wall chasing her, but she's going great guns, Asfura, from Kalos generation. It's all Asfura. She trots in. She won it two and a half. Kalos second, generation third from Ashford Street, Dragonstone. Headed to Ballarat and has now trained a group two winner out of there in the form of Asfura, who, as we mentioned, pre gets the improving ground today, which helps. So that's going to uh, certainly enhance his chances. Ben Ascari, your top four. I think there's two. Cut favouritism for the Caulfield Cup this year. $4 you've got here, punters. Allegron, he's holding firm at $10 as well. Out slightly, Benno at the $11. Knight's order. Running off the back section with about 1,100 metres to go by length, New Merion. Then came Nonconformist. Inspirational girl, fourth the inside from Smoke and Romans, getting a lovely run. Vow and Declare around the favourite. A length and a quarter, Crystal Pegasus and Great House. Then came Gold Trip, always wide as the runs start to come. No compromises set alight. Behind those horses, Chapada and Modophilia from Tralee, Rose, Durston, Sound and Dewis as well back in the field. Allegron's gone back to last. Here are the runs now at the 500 metres. Knight's order, New Marion, Nonconformist made a line of three. Smoke and Romans needs a run. Inspirational girl behind them. Then Vow and Declare, no compromise. Further back, Great House and Crystal Pegasus. Knight's order as they straighten at the 300 metres from New Marion, nonconformist. Smoke and Romans darting back to the inside and Gold Trip is now chiming in very strongly at the 200. Gold Trip up to New Marion, Knight's order and then came Durston getting out. Gold Trip, 100 metres to go just in front. Durston is coming at Gold Trip and got up. Durston has got up to win it for Mickey D from Gold Trip. Photo third, New Marion. Compromise further back, Great House and Crystal Pegasus. Knight's order as they straighten at the 300 metres from New Marion, nonconformist. Smoke and Romans darting back to the inside, and Gold Trip is now chiming in very strongly at the 200. Gold Trip up to New Marion, Knight's order, and then came Durston getting out. Gold Trip, 100 metres to go just in front. Durston is coming at Gold Trip and got up. Durston has got up to win it for Mickey D from Gold Trip, photo third. New Marion or Knight's order, vow and declare behind them, and Montefiore and emulates Gurners Lane 40 years ago in winning the Newcastle Cup, going unplaced in the Metropolitan and then taking out the Caulfield Cup, a pulsating. We've talked about Joe Taylor from the Royal Stable <laughs> in the trainer's room there, Breezy. Uh, <laughs> a lot of work goes into these horses and a huge result for the team. Yeah, and being first to the big screen hints. Oh, it was just, it was absolutely unreal. It even Crystal He's his best asset. I thought he ran up perspective. Um, Gold Trip was given a beautiful ride from Mark Zara. Always smothered up in behind. Looked the winner with his big way. He's done a terrific job, but um, it was just a supreme ride from Michael D. You'll see him in the back there, you know, worse in midfield on the fence, saving all the ground. And as they come. All Knights order, vow and declare. Number 19 in the frame in a Caulfield Cup for the first time in almost 60 years. And Chris Waller grabs his. Second Caulfield Cup in three years. Yeah. <laughs> but in three years. Yeah. But look, he's a, a really good horse. They've taught him how to race now. He's going to get in. I think. Been a group one with her. Yeah, it would be. Thank you. Group one, the Mowat and Shondon Spring Champion Stakes coming up here at Royal Randwick over the two. Th Williamsburg, then came Elliptical, a head back the outside, Machilade, Sharp and Smart Court, three wide, then came Cobbleson from Prometo between them, no change to the action. Further back to Owen County from She's Extreme is starting to pick up, getting onto Prometo's back, Conqueror's not going well. Then Renaissance Woman and Man's Oise coming to the turn, Bunker Hart in front, Williamsburg went up to join it, now Elliptical pulls out, and Machilade pulls Falls out and it's game on on the spring champion stakes. Bunkhart's gone. Elliptical in the middle. Moved up with Machilade. Williamsburg dropped off a length. Sharp and smart angling into the clear. Renaissance woman right down the outside and she's extreme still has chasing to do. It's Elliptical and Machilade slogging it out in the spring champion. Sharp and smart's coming late. It's Elliptical in front from Machilade. Sharp and smart. Elliptical just in front. Sharp and smart goes to it. The outside lunges and I think got up to win. I think Sharp and Smart may have got...
there are nose over elliptical. Third between sheep. Congratulations, Team Rogerson. Oh, yeah, he's a very good horse. He, uh, he's there. nearly cool. done what I want. Wins the Derby next Saturday, and then he can have a holiday. Derby bound. The elliptical team were absolutely home for all money, and then they're very deflated. Is there any admirers as far as going towards the Oaks? And I think Man Zoist wasn't a bad, um, but. It's just hard to take anything away from that winner because he did it uh, the hard way. Roger. Tallman Roy, he's the popular way and he leads the turnover quite easily. Over second elect in a military expert. Military expert, quite soft. To the school side, 600 metres to go, three lengths. Gentleman Roy, who's chasing the pace. A length and a half military expert, call sign Mav, is ridden along. And then came My Oberon improving, about six off the lead from Visionari, niggled at. Then Banker's Choice and Holbein struggling. So Buffalo River, 400 metres to go. Comes back to them, leads a length and a quarter. Gentleman Roy, my over on a sweeping home. Then military expert and behind those bankers choice. Buffalo River on the point of the corner, grabbed by my over on. Who goes for home? My over on two lengths. Buffalo River, bankers choice. Visionari, my over on 100 metres to go. Is coming clear for Johnny Allen, who's going to win the race two years in succession. It's my over on winning by about a length and a half. Second goes to bank. Banker's choice from Buffalo River Visionary call sign. The global form lines to the four. My Oberon, he had a stop in Dubai earlier in the year to run in the Dubai turf. The race that well, was a really good win. No, he's a very good horse. This horse, he sat back three wide, no cover. Annabelle Neesham said before the race that she thought he was probably running about 70% fit, so he'll improve off the back of that. And I spoke to Johnny Allen after the races, and he said, Listen, I reckon if this horse was in the Cox plate, he would have run one big race. And uh, Francesco is going to start your clear cut favourite here, gets in with a beautiful weight. James McDonald in the saddle, he's got his eye in earlier today, and he is the popular way with sports bet for the Mooney Valley Gold Cup for the stayers. Being tested here by Serpentine off the back, and they quicken up a little here, a length and a half to Grand Promenade, who immediately peels out three deep. Nerve not verve behind them, trapped now. Then Per San and Francesco Guardia's trucking up the runs are coming from Desert Icon, and they get away from Luna Flair and Carrop. So the Amazonian at the 450 with Francesco Guardi, who takes the lead, sprints up and takes the lead a length and a half per San, the Amazonian. And Grand Promenade. Then came Luna Flair, who stays on from Nerve Not Verve. But it's Francesco Gardi. The favourite blazes away. Four legs in front of Purse and Luna Flair running on. Francesco Gardi halfway up the straight, led by three legs to Luna Flair, who's finishing well. But it's all Francesco Gardi to win the Gold Cup easily. Two and a half Luna Flair, Purse and a gap Grand Promenade, San Herberto, the Amazon. Wednesday, they take out the million dollar Mac Cafe Mooney. Valley Gold Cup in a hand canter with Francesco Guardi who put towards uh, the first Tuesday in November. The disappointing part is that horse wasn't nominated for the Cup, surely. Yeah. Well, it was nominated and then they didn't pay up. Oh. So um, he's surprised the stable, obviously, this horse, but um, I think he surprised everyone. Eights and the babe with his four, of course, the record. The market was sports bet. $4 out to six fifty. dollars Al Bodegon, they came for him on race day. We're holding more money on him than Zaki. $7, though, with a slight drift. As good as some of the... I'm keen on the chances of Animo here. He's had a faultless preparation. This is grand final. And the four. Well, he dominates the favourite here on the books with sports bet. Animo, clear cut favourite, $2.30. We're open $2.25. The avalanche of money right throughout the day has been on him. But it is a cock on him. But it is a cox plate. It is wait for age. And they are very good group one horses down. They're racing. Animo away only fairly, and Zaki began very fast on the inside. Profondo shows speed. There's Alligator Blood immediately up to the outside of Zaki. So after 200 metres at the back section, 1,200 to go. And Zaki strolls out by about a length and a half to Alligator Blood. Then came Profondo. Two for the back is Animo outside of Young Verta. A length and a half laws of indices at the 1,000 metres from Maximal El Bodegon, Gold Trip. Then Mawunga, I'm Thunderstruck. Mr. Bright. 
outside is last. So Zaki is the leader. When is she going to push the button? With 850 metres to go, Zaki, three quarters of a length, Alligator Blood, a length profondo. They were followed by Animos, only two and a half off the pace. Then came Young Verta, Laws of Indices, back behind them, El Bodegon, Maximal. Then came Gold Trip, Mawunga, I'm Thunderstruck, Mr. Brightside. Zaki getting going and left the fence. Profondo's getting up on its inside. Alligator Blood, three quarters of a length away. Then came Animo, who's still two lengths off the pace, but coming into it, followed by Maximal. Zaki, Alligator Blood, 300 metres to go. Then Animo, who's joining in. Back behind them, Young Verta, around the turn. Zaki, joined by Animo, who looks destiny in the face. At the 150, Animo takes the lead from Zaki. Alligator Blood, I'm Thunderstruck, but it's Animo clear. I'm Thunderstruck late. Animo holding on. Animo, this time for the big A. What it from Thunderstruck, El Bonacon. Then came Zaki, back behind the Mawunga. And then Alligator Blood, Young Verta, around the turn. Zaki, joined by Animo, who looks destiny in the face. At the 150, Animo takes the lead from Zaki. Alligator Blood, I'm Thunderstruck, but it's Animo clear. I'm Thunderstruck late. Animo holding on. Animo, this time. and then Alligator Blood Laws of Indices, Mr. Bright. Well, 12 months ago on this day, neither Joe lose the race across the line and then again in the stewards room. What a difference a year makes. Animo, his greatness is badged. He's been placed in the best of the two-year-old races we've got to offer, the Blue Diamond and the Golden Slipper. He won a Caulfield Guineas. He was placed in a Cox Plate and went ever so close to the three-year-old. He's marched back 12 months later and made it his and perhaps post... ...to, to perform. Um, the, the right horses have run second and third, so it's a proper Cox Plate and it's, a, and it's an absolute humbling privilege to be to be winning it it's an incredible reaction all along j matt was just primarily positioned wasn't he Dwayne? just from that uh, that beautiful draw to get the run of the race he couldn't have scripted it any better superstar hutch alluded to as well the difference between animo jumping from four and on thunderstruck jumping from 10 the sum total of that in the end is quite significant. Oh, it certainly is. I thought uh, Mawunga... I mean, we haven't even mentioned Mawunga. Yep. He looked, he looked gone, coming, gone coming to the corner, but... Um, That's why he should have been more aggressive early. He yeah. needed to be punched into the race. Give him a chance. Yeah, this build and build and build and... Um, the, the, even the old body gone on Thunderstruck back at Flemington, I mean... Gold gonna, trip diving up the gold inside. Trip. There's about eight horses Mawunga, in that race that you I want mean, back next start. The problem is they're all going to race against each other. Exactly. So I what, mean, what about gonna, Zark? You know, we could have some... His record is amazing as it stands, and it could be so much better. When you look back, when he drew those wide barriers yeah. in the Golden Slipper, mm -hmm. he was nudged out. He drew the wide barrier in the Blue Diamond, he got nudged out. He, he had no luck in the Golden Rose, mm -hmm. nudged out, and he should have got the protest in the Cox Plate last year. <laughs> hmm. so, he, he, he could have a champion record. Well, he could have, he could have 11. Yeah, Group ones. One. He's got seven, but four seconds and a third. Running through that pain. The horse that had no luck here is Gold Trip on the inside. He, he had no luck at all in this race. But I'm not going to sit here and make excuses. Uh, the winner is mm. just a, you know, he's a superstar. We sat here. Ben, your numbers for the Manicato Stakes. I'm with Pulele. Uh, I think he's the horse to beat here. I like the effort first up at a distance. Kidding up when things weren't a go. I've lent the way of Bella Nipotina, but that's not to say that I don't have a lot of respect for Goes on top. We've got a $3 clear cut favourite. They're coming for Pulele to win the Manicato Race 11. Bella Nipotina is rock solid with sports bet, but a clear cut. Push a support for Paul Lally, the favourite. To best of Bordeaux, Sava to excel. Paul Lally is right behind those horses. A length and a quarter, 11 11. Balanipatina's tracking up right behind the favourite. The astrologist deeper. Then Streets of Avalon, September run. And Behemoth is last at the 500. Rothfire, best of Bordeaux together. Then Sava to excel, ridden along from the astrologist. Paul Lally next the inside. Hits a bit of a flat spot before the corner as best of Bordeaux and Rothfire go two lengths in front on the corner. Corner. 250 out, Rothfire, best of Bordeaux, and Balanipatina has driven through underneath of those around the turn at the 150. Balanipatina takes the lead, kicks clear, two lengths, Rothfire, and best of Bordeaux streaking away. Balanipatina, and boy, doesn't she deserve this? Bella
Petita Forlex. Rothfire, best of Bordeaux. Corner, 250 out. Rothfire, best of Bordeaux. And Bellanipatina has driven through underneath of those around the turn at the 150. Bellanipatina takes the lead. Kicks clear, two lengths. Rothfire and best of Bordeaux streaking away. Bellanipatina and boy, doesn't she deserve this? Bellanipatina Forlex. Rothfire, best of Bordeaux. Then September run, 11 11. The Australian with Bellanipatina who's been knocking on the Group 1 door for so very long, and she's finally got one in the Manicato, the race that she was just denied in some 12 months ago. Not today, not tonight. Bella year old um, keeps getting better, and this was her crowning glory. She has absolutely walloped them here in the, uh, the Manicato Stakes, Dwayne Day. Yeah. Tim. Started back underneath, and uh, you don't see too many horses anywhere over this distance win by that margin, never mind a group one. Yeah, that no, was super effort. Craig was a little bit stickier, and she daylight second. Um, and the uh, smile from Craig Williams, I reckon he needs to do a sponsorship deal on those uh, chompers that he put out <laughs> over the line. He, he, uh, he really put it out there. He spent a lot of money on them, he got his rewards, but uh, she put them to the support. He was $5 now into $4.80, but it is in secret that seeing some support coming in late. Rock solid too. Geez, punters are getting involved here at Sportsbet. Really good hold on the books here for the Coolmore. So in secret, $3.20, and she's been rock solid. Spot the speed about the strike. Meridius in secret would spot the speed about five or six. They were followed by economics around her from same as Great Barrier Reef, Natuno, then Jackano towards the end of the field. Second last, Sajad, and Buena Noches is last. Onto the course proper, 550 metres to go. Queen of the ball and best of Bordeaux with Grand impact over on the far side. Cool and Gatter is right there, getting through them as well. And then came Meridius and Lofty Strikers running on. 300 metres to go. Grand impact from Cool and Gatter, Queen of the Ball, followed by In Secret, who's also coming on. Grand impact, Cool and Gatter grabbed by the filly. In Secret, In Secret takes the lead. A wall out wide coming, including Saint Magic, but it's In Secret clear. J Mac riding the lights out. In Secret won it. Two leagues, Saint Magic won it. Jay's up for third from lofty strikes, Sajad and Jagano. Economics behind those best. It's sheer utter dominance on so many levels. In secret, the six filly to win the Cornwall stud since it became a group one. James McDonald goes back. Too, too good for the opposition. Say Magic was a terrific run. Buenos Noches initially picks up and sprints better at 1,200 than Jack and O. Jack and O looked like he was winding up and really going to run on strongly, maybe into second or third. But Say Magic comes out, Buenos Noches comes in and he loses his momentum. But that was all elementary because it was all about in secret. Including Say Magic, but it's in secret clear. J Mac riding the lights out. In secret won it. Two leagues, Say Magic. And what she did here in the Coolmore. We'll never know. Um, we, we've been talking about talent all morning. Mm. I don't know. Have we left the best till last? Wait till she fills into that yeah. frame of hers. She's still not there yet. And after Golden Mark. She's mm. scary. She's that good. Um, yeah. In the derby, but certainly Sharp and Smart is going to be the danger. And especially now that James McDonald's on board, I was almost tempted just to switch my numbers around because he's already won four today. But that that is probably one. I've got Pericles, Mr. Sh uh, Mr. Maestro, and Sharp and Smart, and I'm also having something on Manzois at a big price. A roughy. I thought it, at twenty dollars is worth a ticket. The bet count has gone off its nut. All right, Australia, you're getting around James McDonald. We hear you, and you're into three dollars from three forty. Come on, Befeldi boy, Manzois as well. Back with Fearless Knight and Berardino. Grand Piero King's Crossing in two and a half lengths to Skyfios. Seven hundred metres to go. Fujita San in front of Highland Blaze, but the two leaders come back to the field. Distrustful award five deep coming into it. Muramasa three wide, and then Peregles. Sharp and smart is dressed up with no. Nowhere to go at the moment. And then came Barkley Square. Fearless Knight on the outside. And then came Landorf into the running. Fujita San at the 400 metres. Led a length and a half to Pericles Muramasa. Then came Sharp and Smart over on the far side. And Mr Maestro unleashing out wider. They've got to Fujita San at the 250. Pericles Muramasa, Sharp and Smart. And Mr Maestro with Manzois who's coming home hard. Sharp and Smart with 100 metres to go. Led a length and a half to Manzois who's trying Going hard, sharp and smart. Tyreek Manzois is wearing it down. Coming hard and won the derby. Manzois from sharp and smart. Third out wide. Aberfeldy boy, a massive run. They were followed by a photo. 
The spring champion proves to be the supreme form line for the Penfolds Victoria Derby yet again. But it's a boil over with Manzois, the genius of Chris Waller once again. He's been successful in the derby. He's been successful in the derby previously with preferment. Manzois was beaten four and a half lengths in last Saturday's spring champion. The race won. Not so much a surprise, but the derby didn't rate overly highly. And maybe a couple of those horses out of the Vars, Barclay Square mainly, didn't back up. He didn't go to anywhere near the level. Money still to come for La Creek to get somewhere near that price. We've got an odds-on favourite in the tab, Empire Rose. Yeah, the back runner clearly in race eight here at uh, Flemington. Now, let's have a look outside and look at the numbers here, folks, because we've got some turnover. 14 on top from 16, she's lickety split, one ice bath, but then 12. Four cheeks, two thirds down from a tissue ice bath. My whisper, Cliff Sart, and Shalo is last through halfway, 800 metres to go. She's lickety split, steadied in front by about a length and a half to Belle Placier. Then came La Creek as they come up towards the corner. She's lickety split just starts to kick into gear again and now leads by about two and a half to three lengths Bell Plazier around the corner then La Creek who has a little bit of chasing to do from Kiku Exalita back in the field mirror vision Daisy's ice bath Palaisa Pan yearning my whisper she's lickety split went for home sprinted up at the 300 La Creek under the whip chasing then Exalita mirror vision the outside and ice bath up on the fence La Creek moves up at the clock tower from Exalita mirror vision and ice bath over on the inside La Creek just in front of Ice Bath and Mirror Vision. Ice Bath up on the inside and La Creek. Ice Bath holding on Ice Bath. Such a trier, such a brave bear and won it. Ice Bath from Mirror Vision. Photo third. La Creek Exolita, then a tissue kiss on all four cheeks from She's Lickety Split. Ne it's the breakthrough that Brad Widder and his Bonnie Mare Ice Bath have been waiting for. 38 starts and finally a group one on the CV of a horse that's got the best part of almost four, nearly five million dollars in prize money. She has raced and lived through the, 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 the marquees, yes. but um, uh, Brad Widdop from Hawkesbury, he's been uh, a trainer in his own right over the past couple of years. We've, we talk about Ice Bath being the bridesmaid, uh, five group one placings over a mile. It was only fitting that a group one win would come at a mile. Corey, she's finally done it. Well done to Ice Bath, yeah. the, the, the owners, and Brad Widdup. So deserved. Like this, this was, you know, I hate taking away any shine from any other trainer or, you know, owners. But that horse was truly deserved of that race, and I was so... We work in hypotheticals all the time in racing, don't we? Plenty of people thought that Lost and Running may well have won the Everest, given the way the race was run last time, but unfortunately that wasn't to be, and this would be a nice little, well, a nice little win. There's so much at stake. I think uh, Private Eye is uh, the one to beat. I think at 6.50 into 5.50... And the roughy. That one's going to hold out last year's winner, Eduardo. Marzu in third, lost and running fourth. Followed by Kimantari, planted three wide around Riadini, rocketing by the rails. Further back to Private Eye, covering a bit of ground by the looks of it, but plenty of cover from Mars Crusader, then Colding, and Brutality's been shuffled back to last. We had a smart one at odds, leads around the corner from Eduardo, lost and running, hooking out. Then Marzu looking for a rails run, clear from rocketing by Kimantari and Riadini. We and a smart one being challenged now by Eduardo and lost and running moves up on the outside. Marzu's going along the rails. Kimantari and Private Eye down the outside. Private Eye, let's go with a big run. Marzu up the fence. Private Eye, the big win in the nature strip stakes, has come from last to beat Marzu and Kimantari. We had a smart one fourth in rocketing by Riari and Riadini. We had a smart one being challenged now by Eduardo and lost and running moves up on the outside. Marzu's going along the rails. Kimantari and Private Eye down the outside. Private Eye, let's go with a big run. Marzu up the fence. Private Eye, the big win in the nature strip stakes, has come from last to beat Marzu and Kimantari. We had a smart one fourth in rocketing by Riadini. Edward... Here's the overview of Private Eye racing away from them. I can't believe how well this horse is going and he would do to think that... Oh, Brent Navdala and Joe Pride. What a track this has been for Brenton too. Morning, this time around. Well, that, this is just explosive. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah we got to look at your sexual times here. And then he, he, he throttles down and beats this field. I think we even had him down at one point as just a wet tracker. Yes, yes, he's wet, dry, 1,200, 13. Um, 
explosive, airborne, and um, what can you say? He's um. Private Eye is just through the roof, this preparation. He was enormous in the Everest. His first up run here in the Gilgai was sensational. And he has anything between 1,200 and a mile in Australia at his feet. Look at those sectionals. 33.5, 22.02, 11.02. That is... They did not go hard early in this race. That is an electric turn of foot. He's flying this preparation. Only I wish I win in a race. Thumping win there in a race worth God knows how much money. But... Um, yeah, he can come down next week for the sprint, for the mile. The world is the oyster for him at the moment. Where's Mars Crusade? Gate, but we've got to respect like light infantry. I really like uh, Welch out for a big finish from her. What a race coming up. $10 million in prize money and a wonderful trophy put on by Nick Cironi. Mel but it feels more like a Doncaster when I look at this lineup on the board. Yeah, that 100 metres that's missing, though, down to 15 could prove important for a couple that are running on here. You know you've got a good competitive race when you've got a five in front of the favourite. And I am surprised, but we now have equal favourites. Light Infantry has been a noted drifter today. Was around this lightning. Is the best-backed runner in the race, six to five. I wish I win $9.50. Gypsy Goddess is the third best-backed runner in the race. Three and Chain of Lightning. Good stuff. We'll get the hot horse. There'll be some hot... To be one of the best editions. Twenty for the first time, eh? Ten million dollars for the first time. The Golden Eagle, the championship for four-year-olds. Darren Flynn. Very deep. I wish I wins in the middle of the ruck as they go into the first turn. Clear from Light Infantry, who's taken a spot down on the rails. Hinge moves up the other. Further back to Hope in Your Heart from Valana. Jimmy the Bear, Halau, Fangirl, second last. And Convert sees them all down the side of the course in the Congo. They being tested by Mr Mozart who's done plenty of work and Mr Mozart puts the head in front from in the Congo Lady of Honor third chain of lightning gets a great run fourth the rails further back to overpass military expert pinstripes out deep well while in the middle of the ruck Cardinal Gem back on the fence with Gypsy Goddess as they turn and light infantry gives away a big start in the Congo has got a great kick at the 300 in the Congo two length clear from Mr Mozart I wish I win is starting to power into the race and quickly I wish I win at the 200 metres, a shot to the front. Gypsy Goddess along the rails. Fangirl late on the scene. I wish I win in front. Here's Fangirl, the outside. Fangirl goes to I wish I win, who kicked and won. I wish I win just from Fangirl and Gypsy Goddess in a great finish. Closing off. Jim back on the fence with Gypsy Goddess as they turn. And Light Infantry gives away a big start. In the Congo, has got a great kick at the 300. In the Congo, two length clear from Mr Mozart. I wish I win is starting to power into the race and quickly I wish I win at the 200 metres a shot to the front, Gypsy Goddess along the rails, Fangirl late on the scene I wish I win in front, here's Fangirl the outside, Fangirl goes to I wish I win, who kicked and won, I wish I win just from Fangirl and Gypsy Goddess in a great finish, closing off at the end, Light Infantry, from Hope in Your Heart and Hinge, then came in the corner, Lightsaber, Pinstripe and Well Wall was one of the last to finish Oh, Richo, the comeback's complete in so many ways, isn't it? Nolan and Moody on such a big occasion. Winner and he had his lost this winner and he had his deserved winner. And Will Wall got knocked down halfway down the straight or even closer to the... In the Golden Eagle. It's a serious race. I think well, we, we suspected that all the way through it the, the, since it's been run, but, I mean, it is a real race. Um, that the, the form will flow out of it. Um, full field, there's a, the, the form will flow out of it. Um, full field, there's unlucky... T there's tales of woe and mm. there's excitement and, and there's, more importantly, very good horses that contest it and the winner is a very contested and the winner is a very good horse. Yeah. Corey, a bit of interference. Jamie Carr gets suspended, but let's talk about the winner. Well, you can't... I know this, there was a few shuffling up behind there, but he made, he had to make a long, sustained run on he this did. horse, yep. didn't he? Like, he, he got on his bike, he, he, his main thing in his head, you could see the whole race, was, I've got to get it to the outside, I've got to yep. get it to the outside, I need the momentum and the turn of speed that he has shown in a couple of those runs in Melbourne, he really come to the fore there, and it was a winning turn of speed. It was near the ride of the year from Bowman, 
Yeah. It would have been the right idea if it won. One. Boards the rail as you can, just so those runners can't get through. What about the runner Gypsy Goddess? Incredible. <laughs> uh, an outstanding achievement to be first up yep. in a high pressure race like that. And he is a very avail. Um, look, light infantry. Um, everyone wants to kick him. I think it was a total forgive. Oh, I thought it was a massive run. You know, for a horse that had never been around a bend, and he, he, he's a, he would have been a, a momentum horse like the winner. Yep. Well, it's one of them we'll never know. Yep. And the same with... <laughs> and didn't he just fly home late? It's like watching a 500cc motorcycle corner. Like, <laughs> Luke Nolan just had acceleration as he was cornering, and then just between the three and the two, you would have just about been hitting light fixtures in your roof given his acceleration. Yeah, absolutely. And then Luke actually made the comment that he thought he idled a little bit when he got to the front and was sort of by himself there. And um, Waller's mare was super. She was coming up to him and I was absolutely screaming. I'm surprised I haven't lost I'm my I'm surprised voice. you're wearing Cerise this morning. <laughs> Tom, Nick Quinn, a market with thanks to Ladbrokes, please, for Tuesday's Melbourne Cup. Well, Doville legend all the rage. The only runner in single figure odds at 380. It's double figures or better the rest. Montefilia without a fight in Realm of Flowers, in Realm of Flowers, all 11. Gold Trip, 13. Lunar Flare, a six. It is voted. Well, the favourite Duval legend opened up at $3.90. He bottomed out at $3.40 here on race day, but now he's out to $4.60. Punters taking on Deauville legend. Montefilia trims into $9, has her support. Realm of them is Gold Trip, who emulates Humidor in 2017, Elvstrom in 2004, by running in the big three majors in the spring, the Caulfield Cup, the Cox Plate, and now the Melbourne Cup. Unlucky not to finish closer in the Cox Plate. He was very good in the Caulfield Cup, just beaten by one that had a perfect run and six kilos less. He's the class horse of the race, and the wet ground is a big tick. But the query, but the query is the end of 3,200 metres with 57 and a half kilos. This favourite in Doville legend brings the right profile. He's a progressive horse. He went to a new one. What are your favourite? Doville legend, clear cut favour for this year's Melbourne Cup and uh, Charlotte's pick of the yard. But the best backed runner, this is a good go. $11 into $7.50. Rauma Flowers. Wow, Rauma Flowers. Emissary vow and declare. Further back, young Verta. Then who your Marlon Stockman. Next in the field, gold trip, two thirds down to Sean Sweet Jr. Well back on the fence. Montefilia is getting moving. Then came High Emotion, Realm of Flowers, and Arapaho is last. Serpentine, a thousand metres to go. Just led from Tralee Rose. Knight's Order is going to try and set the cup alight and moves up three and four wide and goes to the front early. Smoke and Romans going with him. So as they reach the 800 metres, and Knight's Order has taken off two legs in front of Smoke and Romans. Daring tactics without a fight. Slid up to third. Dover Legend got to fourth. They were followed by Dewis, Tralee Rose in reverse. Then came Realm of Flowers to the outside. Next, Young Verda, Gold Trip. But Knight's Order is going to try and break their hearts in the Lexus Melbourne Cup at the 450, led by two legs, Smoke and Romans. Here's Dover Legend presenting, and Gold Trip down the outside. Emissary is behind those. Gold Trip moves up, takes the lead from Dover Legend. 250 metres to go. Emissary running on. Gold Trip, 150. 50 metres to go, wondering about getting tired. Emissary is trying very, very hard, but Gold Trip is brave. 100 to go, a length and a half, Emissary. Gold Trip is going to win the Lexus Melbourne Cup. Gold Trip wins it in a real staying contest for the ages. Two legs, Emissary. Late third, high emotion. Then Doville Legend. Next to finish in the race, Realm of Flowers. Deshaun Sweet Jr. Then came Stockman, Bow and Declare, a rapper. Marion, Serpentine and Kamora will not complete the course. The coronation of Kieran Maher and Dave Eustace is complete. Their 20th Group 1 in partnership is their biggest yet. The Lexus Melbourne Cup, the 166-19. So, so good, so tough in the Caulfield Cup when it took Durston to mow him down. He then came through an unlucky run in the Cox Plate, but as we've seen so often in recent years... It's not the placing, it's the subtleties of the performance in the Cox Plate that points to this race. And Gold Trip... Alluded to his weight's always been a little bit of a problem for you. But you get the added bonus when you get a horse like this, the right weight, you get the job done. He deserves everything. Australian bloodstock for finding the horse. Everyone's had a lot to do with this horse. Uh, John Bunting, uh, he's a great mate of mine. And 
Uh, he's had this horse in very good order all the way along. Um, um, we were very, very worried that last hundred when Emissary is coming. I thought it was going to be the repeat of the Caulfield Cup, but the horse really dug it. But, um, yeah, I, when I pushed the button, I, he's a sort of horse. You can keep to him for as long, but when you go, you've got to go. Otherwise, I reckon he can think about it. So I went and I was thinking, well, we've got a, still got a bit to go here. But uh, oh, it was great, great training of it to have him. Like, oh, I was very doubtful he'd run 3,200. And Kieran and Dave and the team have just had him spot on today. Uh, um, very sodden track. And Gold Trip becomes the first horse to carry the number one saddle cloth since Maccabi David to win the race. 57.5 kilos. It was perhaps the right year to be the top weight in the race, given that we'd had him that we'd had a, the likes of Durston fall away, Hutch, and then maybe not the same international representation we've had, but he's the... Yeah, it does, and the backstory behind this horse is interesting as well. They paid big money for him. 2.3, Will Bourne. Bloodstock, and he was um, withdrawn from last year's Cox Plate when he was one of the favoured runners, and I was having a chat to his farrier, or the farrier for Kieran Ma Racing, John Bunting, during the week, and he was telling me the story about his feet. His feet needed to be essentially rebuilt and remodelled, and the horse was always one or two out of five lame, and they just couldn't get this two point three, get this two point three million dollar horse sound into the races. And the owners would be sitting there saying, "Up in a favourite, I'm hearing your punters. Come on, let's keep the train going." Toot toot, Soul came. He's the best backed runner here. The import having his first start. He's very impressive in York. You know what? He gets to 26. Two further back to Solcom, who spots the lead about 12 lengths, and Captain Envious is last. So the leader is warning. 850 metres to go for Nash Rawilla. Got a bit quicker now from Persan, about three quarters of a length off the lead. Two further back is Luncies, and then came Cariff. No compromise. Next in the field is Sound at the 650. San Herberto's getting going. Solcom tries to attach to its back. Then Great House, King of the Castle and Captain Envious. They run for the money. 500 metres to go. It's warning with Per San. Luncies makes a line of three. Next in the field is Sound. No compromise. Back to the inside from Great House. Solcom and Captain Envious right down the outskirts. Plenty hopes here. 250 metres to go. Going up and taking the lead. Luncies from warning. Here's Solcom now digging in. Solcom sprints hard, moves up to Luncey's, then Captain Envious, but Solcom is going to dart clear and is a little bit too good for them. Solcom wins it. Second Luncey's, third Captain Envious, fourth sound, then Persan warning Great House. Craig Williams, a record fourth win in the Queen's Cup. John O'Neill and his group of ownership, they know a thing or two about winning a staying feature here at Flemington. And they've got a horse that they can circle the first Tuesday in November in 2023 around, you'd imagine, here with Salkham. We've mentioned... For the race, Craig Williams doesn't trust him yet. He's a young horse on the way up, but he has got untapped ability here and uh, he's going to be an exciting prospect going forward. It's amazing. Cool. <laughs> Take a look at it and Salkham now heads the way at $15, White Marlin $18, Doville Legend $21 there with Francesco Gardi, Gold Trip at $21. So... What I like to monitor is this. Maybe something for next Sunday show. To know <laughs> where the market was 12 months ago and where the gold trips of the well, world sat in that market at that point. Gold point. trip was a pre-post favourite at one stage, so it just goes to show that you're almost mad not to follow that. And was that fair? I'll tell you what, he's making up for it. It was very elegant in the same vein in yes. the end of 2020. Yes. Yeah. There we go, we might be onto something. Is there a market for your horse past the head? Boat. Both Cascadian and Alligator Blood rock solid at $6. Mr. Brightside, $9.50. And Tuvalu, an $11 check. Ones the Kennedy Champions Mile over 1600 reverts to wait for age and back to the final day of the carnival where the Cantalas have been any more wrong there. But for me, Alligator Blood, I just think back to the mile's the key. With There's a great spread of money, only 50 cents between the next three. All around that $6 mark. Alligator Blood, $6. Cascadia and my Oberon. That's the order in the Champions Mile at the 850. Alligator Blood slackened three quarters, now a half. Mr. Brightside, a length and a half to Tuvalu, who's right there. Perched behind the speed. Next in the field is Private Eye, who tracks it and travels better now from Dallas San and my Oberon. Next is Colding, and then came well back in the field, Cinewan, with also towards the end of the field, Aegon Cascadian. And at the end of the field, Kiss Sum. They come to the middle of the track and Alligator Blood is the first to straighten. 400 metres to go. Alligator Blood cuddled in front. Two lengths. Mr. Brightside, Tuvalu. Private Eye under pressure. And then came Dallas San and back behind them. My Oberon. Alligator Blood. 200 metres to go. A length and a half to two lengths. Mr. Brightside, Tuvalu. Aegon late. Alligator Blood. 100 metres to go. Still clear from two. 
Tuvalu, Alligator Blood holding on, the Alligator wins, Alligator Blood and Tuvalu, third a photo finish, Aegon, Mr Brightside, followed then by My Oberon and... Horses that we hold closest to our hearts in Australian racing, these bold front runners that are as tough as a $2 stake, Alligator Blood reprises what he did here in the Australian Guineas when he was looking to really launch. He's been in the wilderness a little bit, but he's been brought back to life by Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. And what a year he's having, of course. He was nabbed in the shadows in the Maccabi Diva here a couple of months ago. He was excellent in the Underwood, doing very similar to what we've just seen there. They tend he's been revitalised in the last six months to win a Stradbroke and Underwood and this race. Yeah, it's an amazing sort of story. His journey, isn't it? His journey, isn't it? All round. And this was actually with the, the daily sectionals, the the number one uh, ranked performance on the day. And I, I look, I've it over a mile. He's an absolute weapon and he's hard to run down because he can keep, he just keeps running those 11 fives, 11 sixes and the horses back in the field have got to run electric times to be competitive. J-Mac out there trying to get a champagne out wide, was he, Dwayne? Yeah, he, he tried something. I was surprised he did it. I didn't think it walked that well to go out there. That Cascadian's run extremely well. Does he run the fastest? Fastest last 600 of the day, Cascade. Yeah. Apparently it was a pre-race plan. That, that was, yeah. you know, the stewards are... ...into even money in the last half an hour. Bets of 10,000... ...time the McKinnon Stakes was a traditional Melbourne Cup lead-up on Derby Day on top of the spring. $3 million tab champion stakes. Group 1 weight for age contest over 2,000 metres. Last year's Izaki, Annabelle Nisham and James McDonald. His record 10th win of the carnival defeated Cascadia and Mawunga on that occasion with Private Eye. I in... uh, really liked his parade out there today. I loved his composure. I thought the team had him... It's about the favourite Animo. $2.20 starting to sweat up and get a little bit hot is the seven time Group 1 winning champion Stallion. Okay. Then I'm thunderstruck a long way back from Mustang Valley. So they reach the 900 100 metres, Zaki is controlling things here for Jamie Carr. Maximal three quarters of a length away. A length and a quarter to hinged. And then came Elliptical. Mawunga's three wide as the race develops. Then came He's a Shocker. Further back in the field, Animo, Banker's Choice, Mr Maestro. I'm Thunderstruck, Mustang Valley. They run for home in the champion stakes at the 500 metres. Zaki in front from Maximal. Then came Elliptical and hinged. Next in the field, Mawunga. Animo is four off the lead, but coming on. And I'm Thunderstruck's two and a half behind him. So Zaki, the leader, 300 metres to go. A full-on championship race now. Two leagues in front. Animo unleashing. They were followed by He's a Shocker. Still Zaki, 100 metres to go. Followed by He's a Shocker. Mawunga Animo, still Zaki. Zaki holding on. Zaki back to back. Zaki wins it. Second, Mawunga or He's a Shocker, then Animo. Next in the field was Baker's Choice, hinged and a lift. But goodness me, there's been some bumps in the road, scratched on Cox Plate morning, came here, won the McKinnon and becomes the first horse in 41 years to win back-to-back -back versions of this race, the Tab Champion Stakes, and this could... ...moment for Annabelle Nisham and Jamie Carr teaming up with success as they did last year, and, well... It... I just said to Jamie, just, uh, all of his wins, he's, he's gone quick, and that's his greatest asset is his big cruising speed. And I said, put your foot down, lead at all costs, and, and don't die wondering. Can you just try and repeat? What have we got? Four, maybe five of the top ten closing set final 200s at the entire meeting were in this race. So if you're running home in that sort of time, it shows you haven't spent much petrol at the moment. This Maybe he does. I know he won a Cox Plate, but maybe he doesn't run 2,000 on a big, big Flemington track. Yeah. So yeah. interesting. <laughs> A million dollars up for grabs in this two-year-old feature, the Golden Gift, the fourth running of the Golden Gift at this prize money level. 480. She did get as short as 440 a little bit earlier in the day. Barber is second elect at the $5 quote, got out to 650. Coincide is it... Field ready to be sent on the way. Racing now. Barber missed the kick off the outside. Shine your light, no speed. Infatuation and speeds to jump well. There's Git along, bursting along the rails. The pace along. Then raises the outside, two off to Barber. Flying trapeze and Kintyre is the last one. Git along held the front there. Git along held out Misty Legend. Infatuation third. A length and a half then to Mahaba. Followed by Mexico. Speeds to Disneck, written up on the rails. Very deep then is Coincide. Oh, Barber came out and gave Shine your light the short back and sides.
at the 300. It's Giddle on the leader from Infatuation closing in. Mahaba sticks on well in third. Then came Barbara Mexico. Infatuation moves up to get along. Mahaba's all over the shot. It's Infatuation. Barba is cutting them down the outside. Infatuation in front from Barba. Levels up. Lunges. Barba cut down Infatuation to win the golden gift. Photo for third. Mahaba. Then his coincide. Oh, Barba came out and gave uh, Shania Light the short back and sides at the three. It's Giddle on the leader from Infatuation closing in. Mahaba sticks on well in third. Then came Barbara Mexico. Infatuation moves up to get along. Mahaba's all over the shot. It's Infatuation. Barba is cutting them down the outside. Infatuation in front from Barba. Levels up. Lunges. Barba cut down Infatuation to win the golden gift. Photo for third. Mahaba and Summer Loving. Boy, there's plenty to talk about out of that race. Mexico next from Get Along. Remarkable race. Everything was happening in the straight. But this is unbelievable. Barber, look how much he misses the start, Lizzie, number one. Unbelievable. I just absolutely forgot about him. I never thought that he was going to be able to miss the start so significantly and run over the top of infatuation. This was He was terrific, and he's a legitimate uh, entry into the Golden Slipper. There's no doubt in the wide, wide world. In fact... Jump off, but I thought when he did eventually get clear air, you know, I expected him to just really let go, but he had a little bit of a think about it. So, I mean, there's huge amounts of improvement mentally with the Colt, but he's obviously uh, loaded with talent. Uh, he's superbly bred, and, you know, he's only going to improve on what he did today. A length off in the Burgess Queen from remaining undefeated and making herself five from five, which is exactly what Bustler's looking to do here today. She drops down to four, 54 and a half kilos after carrying 50. 58 on I think 1978 was the last time someone won a Karakata into a guinea, so it's 44 years ago, and I've run second in it. Of the WA Guineas. This is in Santa Bray. To God, Lord Gannicus down on the inside, just in front of Bustler, about to make his move. Around them goes Lyndon Lady. Back there as well, coming along the side, Rejuva King, Amelia's Jewel, out three and four deep, coming to the turn, just has to steady up for a moment. Catch these hands back there. So Santa Bray, Sunny Honey and Upper Limits. All the King's men hit the front, though, in the Guineas. St. Oreo looming large. St. Oreo on the outside of all the King's men. Further back behind them, here comes on the outside, Bustler and Amelia's Jewel. St. Oreo, Amelia's Jewel, Amelia's Jewel hits the lead, going with a Bustler, but the Jewel sparkles in the guineas. Amelia's Jewel has beaten Bustler. St. Oreo third from all the King's men. Behind them, Rejuva King, Sunny Honey, Lyndon Late in the guineas. For the Super Philly. Miss uh, Jill in a couple of weeks when we're over oh, there for the north, we're over oh, there for the northerly. Yeah, she's a she's a, a machine. Yeah, Darren, um, we're going to pitch to you. Well, she does because I was part of the trip with Peter Walsh. We were across in England uh, on a racing tour to Royal Ascot. Went to Judmont Stud. Uh, he picked out a, a mare he wanted to be covered by Kingman at the time, and then uh, he was going to France and he'd heard about a stallion called Siuni and. Uh, he finished up buying a mare called Bumbacina now. Is a $4.60 chance currently fixed odds. $5 about tricks of the trade. The pair of them have had a number of encounters over the recent six-month period. Carly's Karma, a merciful time with this horse. They knocked back an offer over $1 million for him at the end of last campaign. They said no at this stage of our... Good man over on the inside of the big mare, Carly's Karma. A length and a half tricks of the trade. God has chosen outside of it. Down on the inside, Captain Chaos in the middle, Search and Rocks. Alaskan God about to wind up getting around the outside of Ironclad. They're followed by Star Trade, Treasured Star, last of the line. And Yonkers dropping out here, a well-beaten commodity in the railway. They'd straightened up and comfort me, made a run at them. Ranged up, grabbed the lead from Marachino. Resort man got an inside run. Buster Bass, Search and Rocks behind them. Alaskan God, Tricks of the Trade. Tricks of the Trade is gathering them in. Here comes Tricks of the Trade. Tricks of the Trade pulls a little bit of magic out of his Tricks of the Trade. And he wins the railway stakes. Tricks of the Trade for veteran trainer Cole Webster, Troy Turner has won the railway from either Star Trade, Comfort Me, last of the line behind them, and Treasured Star, God has chosen a lap. Ridden by Troy Turner for his old boss, the great Colin Webster. Trade fair to win his ninth from 14 and has dashed away. Last of the line coming from well off them. Crown Perth, winner bottom... 
the interviews for the Crown Perth Winterbottom Stakes. Group one was one and a half million dollars. 13 and four with the uh, the visitors here. Rothfire from the good draw. Palaley, a better set up for him on a dry track background to bend with those bleak four cheeks. This whole test is a long way back in the field. And last of all is Palaley at the 600 mark. Indian Pacific had gone to the lead from Massimo. Red Can Man working very hard. Three wide. Snipperucci's back on the inside running fourth. A length away the astrologist from Rothfire handy. Elite Street sneaking around the outside of those. Onto its back. Miss Kentucky. And then came Hot Z, followed then by Kiss on all four cheeks into the home straight now. Massimo reclaims the lead. Rothfire Elite Street come down the outside. So does Kiss on all four cheeks. This will test just rattling home. So's Palaley. Kiss on all four cheeks. Look at Palaley. Kiss on all four cheeks. Palaley. Palaley. Lunging. Palaley. Palaley claims Group 1 for Godolphin at Ascot. Palaley from last. A mighty performance to win for cheeks into the home straight now. Massimo reclaims the lead. Rothfire Elite Street come down the outside. So does Kiss on all four cheeks. This will test just rattling home. So's Palaley. Kiss on all four cheeks. Look at Palaley. Kiss on all four cheeks. Palaley. Palaley. Lunging. Palaley. Palaley claims Group 1 for Godolphin at Ascot. Palaley from last. A mighty performance to win from Kiss on all four cheeks. Hot Z there with Rothfire and Elite Street. This will test you. Palaley from last has finally got his group one at his ninth go at the top level three placings before a win today and that is the biggest in winter bottom history it was very very reminiscent of graceful girl 12 months ago out the back letting the race unfold and then erupting take him back make sure he was relaxed and uh, hopefully finish stronger than the rest. biggest race in now peeling to the outside with ben mellum in the saddle this reminded me of worms oakley plate win where last of the 200 and then just went awushka yeah, it was a barnstorming win, wasn't it? What did you say at the top of the show? Kapow. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It had a kapow kind of feel to it, didn't it? But, uh, you yeah, know, obviously tried... Well, there's no <coughs> way he was going to start $13. Well, he we started $13. This all started favourite, and in hindsight, we got it wrong. Balanipatina should have been favourite there, Chris, so in, in a Manicato. But he started favourite in a Manicato and was, you know, not, not despised at all in a, a champion sprint. He goes over a winter bottom and goes around at $13. So hopefully a few of the starting price profilers out there might have had a result out of him because, you know, um, on the... Now called the Northerly Stakes. Northerly's Colours won here early. And now he's going to have to come from the tail of the field with Cascading, or further back anyway. Well, I'm sure he's definitely buoyed by the fact that we've seen horses making at least a level of ground. I'm sure he sat back there in the jockey... ...side of the West. The three-year-old filly Amelia's jewel. It doesn't end there. First onto the scene as a two-year-old on debut. She won the Supremacy Stakes. Then she won the Jim Crack. 16, 1, 14, 15. And she is now into favourite Amelia's jewel as she joins the line. 50 kilos, three-year-old at weight for age. 1800 has been a wonderful success. Side Bustler given every possible hope. They're followed after a length and a half to Steinem, who's got up on the inside of Amelia's jewel. Search and Rocks has covered plenty of extra ground from Treasured Star. Dom to shoot, then Star Trade. Now round the outside. McDonald had to sell the farm and take off a fair way out. He's off and he's around them four and five deep, followed by Tricks of the Trade, Alaskan God. Captain Chaos God has chosen. It's Ironclad straightening for home, though. Ironclad led a length and a half. On the outside, Bustler comes at it, Search and Rocks. Behind those, Amelia's Jewel picking away through. Cascadians coming down the outside. Amelia's Jewel out after Ironclad. Amelia's Jewel hits the front. And Walshies, West Aussie, wonder filly, has won the Northerly. Amelia's Amelia's Jewel scored from Ironclad or Cascadian. Behind them, close up on the outside. Bustler comes at it, Search and Rocks. Behind those, Amelia's Jewel picking away through. Cascadian's coming down the outside. Amelia's Jewel out after Ironclad. Amelia's Jewel hits the front. And Walshies, West Aussie wonder filly, has won the Northerly. Amelia's Jewel scored from Ironclad or Cascadian. Behind them, close up on the inside, Steinem. Bustler, Alaskan God, Tricks of the Drain run on with Dom to shoot in behind them and she this wonderful Western Australian filly who's ready to take on the country after winning the northerly stakes and what a moment for Simon Miller his first that is going to head east and who knows what she can do Ironclad's going to run second your first group one did you think it would happen 
we've been peppering away, Greg. Uh, so it was, it was at some stage it was always going to happen. But uh, to be honest, it, it didn't worry me if it didn't. I just love winning, whether it be here or Northern Maiden. I'm a competitive bass and I love winning. So, um, but geez, isn't she a good filly? Well, tell us about her. Tell us. Freak. Like she's got an unbelievable engine with a huge stride and a great brain. Um, 